Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I was, it's after 12 o'clock in the a.m., and I was watching, which is what I do just before I go to sleep. I'll go and I'll check out some video on YouTube, something that I won't call it entertainment, but I came across this family, and it's like the Cantier family c r e something tier family and it's a group of guys all in the same family i suppose and they were talking about their first time listening to certain music and they were playing bone thugs and harmony now many of you don't know about bone thugs and harmony uh it's a group that found their way to easy e and easy e promoted them. They were a group that he put out there, and I, I'm an Eric White fan, you know, the Easy e uh, same age, and he went to Washington, I went to Westchester, and I knew of him, just never had the opportunity of meeting the young man, and a lot of respect for Mr. Easy e a lot of respect for Bone Thugs and Harmony. Now, I'm only mentioning this because I was, <laughs> sorry, they were playing uh, Crossroads, Thuggish, Thuggish Bone, and uh, Notorious Thugs with Biggie Smalls. They didn't play the Bone Thugs in Harmony and Tupac. Thug Love! Um, you know, they didn't play Thug Love, and I, man... I just I was I was hoping they would. Uh they they said Biggie was better than Pac and I took offense to that. I I didn't like Biggie. His Bone Thugs in Harmony I thought was okay. Tupac's was okay, but Biggie I was a Pac person and only because of Brenda's got a baby. Uh that's where Tupac won me over. He didn't win me over with uh the late Shock Z, uh, Mr. Humpty, he didn't win me over when they did round and round, round and round. I get around, step up, step up, step up. He didn't win me over then. Even though Tupac, I think, had the best line in that song, he stood out, which is what made him popular. Um, why am I talking about this? Because... I realized some things. Tupac, Biggie, Bone Thugs in Harmony, Venus Serena, Larry Graham Prince. I mean, we can go on and on and on and talk about the stars, the athletes, and the musicians who are all associated with Jehovah's Witnesses. While, literally, I didn't know about Bone Thugs in Harmony until. I was listening to the music today, and I'm like, wait a minute. Because they said a couple of things. And it wasn't just because they used the word Armageddon and they used the word resurrection and all of that. Um, it was some of the words they used. It's words that Jehovah's Witnesses use. And I'm like, I'm guaranteeing that they're affiliated with Jehovah's Witnesses somehow. And I go and I find out that Crazy Bone studies with Jehovah's Witnesses. And they asked him a question about Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, his name is D, and I can't think. See, I'm upset now because I actually have respect for this man. Um, I can't think of his name. His name is something D. And I, I have my phone, and I hate... Do I have my phone? Yeah, I have my phone. I hate the fact that I can't remember what his name is because he does videos and he does quite a few videos and um there's a level of respect for this young man and now i gotta he does the let me go to the screen ghetto uh ghetto not ghetto but ghetto boys reloaded and i don't know why i can't think of this guy's name and I'm not happy with that. Well, either way, he asked him a question. He asked him, what does Jehovah's Witness mean? Ladies and gentlemen, the name means exactly what it says. 
It means that they talk about Jehovah, that they witness about him. My clock has stopped right here. Do you guys see that? My clock shouldn't be stopped. There we go. It was stopped, but shouldn't be stopped. Now, before I go on about his question, let me go ahead and explain to you all that I did a video yesterday, and it was talking about doing petitions, stop doing motions. And it's no sound. Well, what happens is I have this thing. It's called Cyber Ghost. It's a VPN, and I just acquired it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. Okay, it just, they don't keep records of what you're doing and all of that stuff. And okay, I, I, I appreciate that. They don't keep logs. So, okay, let me try CyberGhost. But the only problem is it's, it doesn't work like I would like it to work. It's a little bit slow and cutting on and all of that. And it, it does the security, protects your system and everything, protects your information. And so what it did is... It turned off the mic. Now, what most of you don't realize, even when you're not talking, your computer is listening. That's why, if you notice, you'll have a conversation about something. They've done videos about this on YouTube. You'll have a conversation about something. Next thing you know, every time you go to Google, what you were having a conversation about is what's pulling up all the time. And so it turned off the microphone. I didn't know. So I did that video. This wasn't the system messing with me. This was CyberGhost. I did the video, and there was no sound. It took me an hour to figure out what was going on. So I tried to do the video again, <laughs> and then Google said, you ain't doing that video. See, that's CyberGhost right there. It can't connect to the Internet. See? CyberGhost. It can't connect to the Internet because I'm not connected to the Internet. So the system can't with me right now. All right, let's get back to that information ladies and gentlemen the question he asks is what does jehovah's witness mean who is jehovah he, he actually asked that question then he spoke about how muslims or muslims believe in allah and mr crazybone explained to him that allah is translated it simply means god technically it means moon god so it's not the same as Jehovah. And he explained it very well. I was kind of surprised because usually people who are studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, they can hold their own, but you can tell that he's been studying for a moment. And give props to the young man. Ladies and gentlemen, Jehovah's Witness simply means they talk about Jehovah. <laughs> They're witness about Jehovah. Just like a witness to an accident. They tell what happened at the accident. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses tell about Jehovah. They show people who Jehovah is from Scripture. They explain to people that his name appeared in the original Bible 7,000 times, which means he wanted his name to be known. But man decided, well, we're going to be man. We're going to take his name out of the Bible because we don't want nobody knowing his name. No, we're going to tell them that his name is just God. His name is too important for us to be pronouncing because we're stupid men. So we shouldn't be pronouncing his name. So they took his name out. It was a tradition. The Jews did it. The Jews did it. Excuse me. The Jews did it. They started it first. Not those Jews that you see over in Israel right now. Those are not the Jews. Those are not the original Jews. Those are people who went into that land and claimed to be Jews. It's a good idea on their part. Okay, good idea on their part. Remember, when the Romans went in, they literally killed 1,100,000 Jews in 70 CE. They weren't playing. so if, And they burnt the temple and burnt all of their records. So there is no way of knowing who the natural Jews are. And we got a lot of black people saying that they Jews. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, Jacob was a Syrian. He was Syrian. Assyria. Syria. Um, he wasn't from Ethiopia. You, you just got to understand it. So Jacob's descendants, the 12 tribes of Jacob or the 12 tribes of Israel, were not Ethiopian. Sorry. Now, uh, there was this thing, uh, Moses marrying a Cushite. The Cushite Moses married wasn't from the land of Cush, the African nation. 
in the south of Africa, but from the land of Kush, from Media, where Media Persia, from Media. That's where that Kush came from, because there was a city of Kush there. They were referred to as Kushite as well, because Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, lived in Media. So it was that Kush. So she was a Kushite from that nation. So Moses' wife, Zephora, was not, quote-unquote, African. But the hieroglyphs on the pyramids, yeah, the pyramids have been there for over 4,000 years. They were there prior to the flood. Those hieroglyphs, there are several Ethiopian nations that conquered Israel. I mean, not conquered Israel, excuse me. Ethiopian nations that conquered Egypt. Uh, Tahaka being one Ethiopian king. And they were the ones who went ahead and redid the hieroglyphs because they weren't just there for a couple of years. They were there for many years. So they redid the hieroglyphs because they were now the new pharaoh. So just got to know your history. All right, enough about all that. You don't, don't take my word for it. Go and do your research. I can't show you anything right now because I'm not connected to the internet and I'm not about to connect because that system is turned off. Yeah, that's hooked to the other system because I didn't, I didn't reset it. So because I didn't reset it, the system didn't have enough energy and I don't want it to drain all the way. So I need it to charge up all the way tomorrow and I'll make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Now, getting back to the conversation, I'm sitting up there listening to these youngsters listen to Bone Thugs and Harmony, and many of you, many of you, Bone Thugs and Harmony would not be your cup of tea. They wouldn't be the group that you would listen to. I don't listen to rap anymore, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because of, because rap is not what rap used to be. You see, when I did listen to rap, I listened to the storytellers. I listened to the guys who, when they said something, it meant something. I don't listen to this junk now where somebody's just putting words together that rhyme. Anybody can put together words that rhyme. Children do it all the time. When you want to make fun of black people, you put them in a movie and you have them rhyming every other word because they think that's all black people can do is rhyme. Ladies and gentlemen, taking words and telling a story and making every other line of that story rhyme with a word that fits the story, that's a skill, and not everybody can do it. And the idea of the art is not to use the most obvious word. Now, I was upset when I heard about people getting thesauruses and all of that stuff. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't come up with words on your own, then you don't need to be rapping. Just an opinion. You don't have to like it. You don't even have to appreciate it. As I said, I was listening to see it stopped again. And that's probably because I got a couple of things going on in the background. I don't even know why this stopped. This should be going. Huh. That's interesting. Oh, well. Because this is a, uh, this is one of those things. Wait, hold on. Let's see. Where are we? I'll pause it, even though I shouldn't have to. Now I will open it. Open, open, open. Resume. There we go. All right. Getting back to while listening to those youngsters, because I, I there were Phil Collins in the air tonight. I can hear it coming in the air tonight. Okay. It was two youngsters, and they filmed themselves hearing the song for the first time. And the expression on their face was priceless. Well, the same thing with these gentlemen. They, because they're of this generation now, and when I say this generation, they're older teenagers. They're of this generation now. When they were listening to Bone Thugs and Harmony, they couldn't get it right away. They didn't understand that when Bone Thugs and Harmony came out, there was only another group that sounded anywhere near close to them, and that was, well, before he was in a group, Tongue Twister, later Twista, 
and then the group that he was in called Do or Die. But other than that, there was nobody else out there. And what I had done while I was a youngster, there was this thing about people biting other people's rhymes, stealing their lines. And that's the, that's the, the thing that was going on. They would hear somebody say something and they would take it and add it to theirs, just like people who tell jokes and you know that comedians do not like for people to steal their jokes. That is the worst thing you can do is steal another comedian's jokes, which is why Michael Collier will let you know that he borrowed the joke from people like Red Fox. Okay, or he borrowed the joke from someone who has passed. He'll tell you, I borrowed the joke. He said, they can't use it anymore. But if I'm going to use it, I'm going to tell you where I got it from. And I really appreciate the fact that he does that. That way, not only are they remembered, but the joke that they told, which is clean, gets to be rehashed and retold. So, well, I, I've already told you guys two of the jokes that Michael Collier did that I really appreciated. The one was the coffin joke, you know, where the coffin chases the man into the house and knocks down the door and he throws a cup, a bottle of Robitussin at him to stop the coffin. Okay, that one, that was Red Fox. Okay, love that one. That one, I'm sorry, it is so corny and you know it was Red Fox because that was Red Fox. He said the corniest junk and it was clean. No cursing, no sexual overtones. So. There you go. Well, there was a period of time where individuals were taking other people's lines and then trying to make it look like they came up with it and adding it to their junk to make themselves look better. It was called biting. And you had groups like UTFO did a song called Bite It. Okay, and because that's what people were doing. Uh, Rapids Delight, everybody was biting off of Rapids Delight. Rapids Delight, Sugar Hill Gang, the first rap to actually make it to the national airwaves, even though they weren't the first rap group out there. Okay, you'd already had the people during the 60s, Dolomite and so many others. This is not a rap history thing. This is just me saying, I'm in there having a good time listening to that and listening to their reaction while they're doing that. It was a nostalgic moment. Because I remember that period of time, not the 90s with all the violence and associated with rap, but the early 80s when there wasn't any violence associated with rap where individuals like me, we would go to the underground clubs, go to the underground show. There was a place in Hollywood that we would go to and we would rap on an open mic. And me and my friends would go there, and I would get on the mic, and one of the one of my other friends would get on the mic. Uh, it was a fun time. We don't have those times anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Those times will never be here again. See, this generation that's growing up now, they don't have those moments. Yeah, they'll, they'll have a good moment here or there. Well, I told you, I don't remember my past, which is why that was so important. Because while listening to that, I could remember driving with my speaker system, because all of my cars had sound. Uh, LL Cool J came up the song, Cars, well, was called, um, I think it was called Booming Systems. But the lyrics were, Cars Ride By With The Booming System. And that was me. I didn't, again, play the just the bass where that's all you heard coming down the street no no you heard the vocals and everything i tell people all the time about being <laughs> in beverly hills and play stevie wonder and a guy pulling up next to me he's in this uh convertible sports car and he pulls up and he says you know he waves at me and he asked me to roll my window down because i rolled my windows up not so I could blow up my own interims, because my hearing is still to this day <sighs> irritatingly sensitive. But I rolled down my window, and he says, man, who is that? And I said, Stevie, man, I used to listen to that when I was a child. And, man, thank you for playing that. That brings me back. Man, I promise you, 
I said, that's why I do it. I always told people, I will take you back. Uh, when I went to New York to help the guy with the restaurant, and I told him, you in the back, you do the cooking, I'm managing, let me handle the front. And I told him, I am going to put music on. I brought my MP3 player, and I connected it to the sound system, and I would play my music. Uh, what was her name? Dang it, you light up my life. Debbie Boone. If you guys don't know the song because you're not old enough, but everybody who's old enough knows you light up my life. Okay, well, there was a older lady with her family there. And the daughter came to me while she was paying for the meal because I ran the register at night. And she said, I want to thank you. I said, okay, well, you're welcome. She says, no, the music that you're playing, she says, this is the first time in years my mother has sang. And this song right here, she's been singing since it came on. So thank you. I said, you're more than welcome because that's what that music is for. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a friend who is been diagnosed with dementia and it's starting to take effect I spoke with her today I keep in touch with her she's in her late 70s and as I'm speaking with her she's asking about the dogs and she asked me what kind of dogs are they and I go through the whole spill of telling her about the Labrador and the uh, pit bull and the mix and how the person who put that combination together were geniuses and then five minutes later, as I'm out there feeding the dogs, she says, oh, and what kind are they? It was at that moment that I realized that it was progressing with her because she's never done that before. That was the first time. Her husband died of dementia. And he died in the early 2000s, I think it will... She He survived Katrina, but I believe he died right around 2008. No, 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 he didn't. He died around 2013. I'm sorry, while I was in Puerto Rico, he passed away. So, yeah, he made it all the way to 2013. Sorry, my memory is not all that great. But I do understand somewhat of what she's going through. And so, nostalgia. When you have memory problems, being able to reflect on as Al Green would say, the good times um, is very important. That's the best I could say. Now, here's the thing. I play oldies for a reason. Why? Because it helps me to reflect. And I need that. Although I can come up with the best strategies, like I promise you, what we're getting ready to start doing for people with SACOM, because here's the man whose brain almost got fried, and he comes up with an organization, SACOM, and helps people create securities, helps people create trust, help people create these trusts in such a way that they are, if they've done them right, impenetrable. Then they create tax credits, which these credits, if they do it right, can take care of everything, then he helps people understand how to take a promissory note and an application and send it to the Treasury. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, if the Treasury refuses to compensate for that application, then you sue them for violation of the Federal Reserve Act and the March 9, 1933 Act and the Congressional Record as proof that that was the intent of Congress and Presidential Proclamation 2039. What do I mean by you sue them? Ladies and gentlemen, you gave up the gold. Give me back my gold. All of you who have properties and you have your promissory note and your application, well, if they take the house, then give me back my uh, security. Give me back my collateral. Go back and read Title 12, Section 412. 
Give me back my collateral. If they took your house 15 years ago, give me back my collateral. You took the house. You don't get the collateral security and then keep the house. Give me back my collateral. Unaltered. Man, you talk about changing this whole system. They ain't got no choice. You guys need to understand, unorthodox though it may be, the information you receive from me is no child's play. You may not like the way I deliver it, some of you, but I don't care. Okay? You, your likes and your dislikes, I could give a, a care less about. Okay? Now, let me get back to Bone Thugs and Harmony, Venus and Serena. Now, of course, the Waynes, the Waynes brothers, uh, Damian Waynes, Marlon Waynes, and all of them, they were associated with Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jacksons were associated with Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not Jehovah's Witnesses anymore. For the most part, I don't know what's going on with many of them, but I do know the majority of them. Damian, he's still studying. Last I heard. But I don't know. I don't keep up with their lives. That's not... That's not how Jehovah's Witnesses work. We don't look to try to gain more and more celebrities. We don't need them. I just realize how many celebrities are associated with Jehovah's Witnesses. It appears they produce a very good crop. Well, just by listening to the young man talk and by listening to their rap, I could tell that they were associated with Jehovah's Witnesses. I could tell Biggie was associated with Jehovah's Witnesses before I even knew his mother was a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, uh, the Jacksons, well, I met them when I was a teenager. I didn't meet Michael, but I met everybody else, Jermaine, Tito, Mar uh, not Marlon, <laughs> Jermaine, Tito, and, well, all of the brothers were there. So we got a chance to talk with all of them uh, for, a, it's an hour and a half. I mean, we laughed, we joked. It was It was an enjoyable time. So... Knowing these things, and Serena and Venus Williams went to the same congregation that those two went to, but they were seven years old at the time that I went there. So I never met them. I met their parents, but I never met them because they, seven, they're they teenagers, and they're not even teenagers. So they were just, it was just a fly by night, hello, goodbye. Uh, but I did know that their father, as you saw in the movie, King Richard, their father was taking them for a tennis practice. That was a known thing. That wasn't an unknown thing. Okay, so we, I knew that. Everybody knew that. And I can just say it just that way. But it wasn't nothing special. I mean, it, this was just, um, what, was, what was going on? At that moment, when they were... At that age, Tiger Woods was just becoming very popular. And so here we have two little black girls who were playing tennis, and they were, they hadn't started winning awards yet. They were only seven. So they hadn't started winning awards or uh, championships or tournaments or anything like that. He was just training them. And after that, I, I left that hall, what is it, about a year later? I was only there for about a year. And then I went back to my original one. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, all of this to say that memories mean a lot. Don't take them for granted. You can't always hold on to your memories. I just mentioned about the young lady who's got dementia. Please understand, oh, again, I'm not trying to change that. And so if the screen changes on you guys, I'm sorry. Let me do that. It's supposed to show me the frame. Show me the frame! Hold on, let me let me pause for a second. All right. Uh, I hope it doesn't. doesn't mess up because that's what happened to that video where the screen got real small at the end because I made that mistake. I was moving the mouse around and ended up hitting when I wasn't intending on hitting and so it shortened everything but if you look at the numbers right here this shows that this is the area 
that the video is recording. But remember, I'm not showing anything on the screen, so it doesn't matter if it's large, big, or small. But I am going to soon start regressing back to where I was after the operation. That's why I say you see me doing more videos lately because I have no choice. Eventually, I'm not going to have this information to give to you. What most of you don't understand is, and I'll, I'll do the best I can with explaining it. In 2001, well, let's go back before 2001. No, 2001 would be the time period. 2001. Um, there was a unique experience that doesn't happen to a lot of people, but it occurred with me. Not only shortly after that experience was I allowed to know what was going to happen in my future. For instance, I knew that I would have a farm. <laughs> a farm. Me? A person who grew up in the city? What do I know about a stupid farm? And sure enough, in 2000, from 2008 to 2012, I had a farm. That was New Mexico. I had uh, llamas sheep, a Pyramidian mountain dog, and an Alaskan Eskimo dog. And I was getting up every morning, watering the animals, and buying hay. Hey, I had a farm. Three acres of land. The same thing like here. Three acres of land. But knew about it in 2001. So much that I even told my best friend. I even told him um, at the time that I was not going to be around him anymore, that I was going to be heading to the East Coast. I promise you, I fought very hard not to go. Told you guys about the Greyhound bus where three transmissions, three different buses, two of the buses, the transmission exploded on the highway. Not, no, 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 not broke down, not stopped working, no, exploded, literally pieces all over the place, white smoke everywhere. Two buses in a row because I was heading north. Because I headed north, please understand, I saw the area that I'm living in right now. And I said, as we drove by the downtown area, eh, I could live there. And that's where I am right now at this moment. I will not begin to tell you why I'm here. I know why I'm here. I know the reason why I'm here, and I know the benefit of my being here. I wouldn't be here otherwise if there wasn't a benefit, if there wasn't something of necessity. Then, I knew that I would be placed in someone's jail. That's why you haven't seen me fighting it. See, I've tried to fight it. <laughs> That's why two transmissions blew up in the middle of the highway, and the third transmission looked like it was going to blow up, but we made it to our destination. And then I didn't have any problems once I started heading, after I changed the destination on my ticket, didn't have any more problems. So everything has happened. I will say something that I really haven't said before, and that's why I'm staying away from them for the most part, and they don't even know. I know that five of my family members will die, my mother being the first. Yes, I've already known that she was going to pass before she even did it. I know that there will be four more, and it won't be pretty. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think or how you think. You can think I'm crazy. You can think I'm out of my mind. I've been through too much, and I've seen too much to discount that. So I don't know which one. I don't know who. I did know my mother, and I only presumed that because she was the eldest of everyone. So that's the only reason why I presumed that. But the other ones, I don't know. I just know that at least five. And as I told the God that I serve, I wouldn't be able to handle that. That's too much. He knows how much I hate death, and he knows the effect it has on me. I really do have a problem with death. That's why, as I told you, the most stressful period I've ever been through in my entire life, and I've been through a whole lot including my best friend dying. The most stressful period I've ever been through is those puppies dying. 
the mother laying on them. I had not been through anything like that a day in my life, and it's hard to think that that was only 12 weeks ago. Well, not 12 weeks ago, because they're 11 weeks old now. But, yeah, technically 12 weeks ago. But it's hard to believe that that was the case. But very stressful for me. Got through the summer. Yay! Anyway. I knew that I would be in jail for 45 days. And that I would meet 45 people who didn't know who Jehovah was. Now look at that. 45 and 45. We don't do the numbers thing. I don't play numbers. Okay? I don't do numerology. Can't stand it. Won't do it. The God that I serve says no. So the answer is no. I don't give up what you think. I told you I don't do it. If you want to do it, go off into the corner and do it by yourself. Okay? Anyway, I get extradited to another state in the back of a cargo van going through five states through a walking hearse. No, Wick, Wicken Hut, or whatever that stupid name of that dumb company is. And in the back of a cargo van. Then they're, at night, they're dropping us off at county jails, putting us in a cell for the night. And then they're taking us the rest of the way. And when I get to my destination, the total amount of days is 45 exactly. I get released on the 45th day. I just did a video explaining how that 45th day ended. Because I had no clue when I was going to be released. None. But I wasn't going to fight it. The judge said, we're going to appoint it. You will not appoint nothing for me. And everybody's looking at because we're on video. He's doing a, before COVID, <laughs> he's doing a video in 2005 telling me, just be, this is uh, right after Katrina hit. But he's telling me that they're going to appoint an attorney. And I told him, you're not going to appoint nothing. I will speak on my own behalf. Oh, I'm going to appoint. I, what did I tell you? I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> he stopped the hearing and he ordered them to take me away. And then I go ahead and I speak with that guy that day, the last person, a 45th person. And I get released on that 45th day. Never got called back. Never heard another word from that idiot. Okay, but, and I'm going to leave him alone because it had nothing to do with him. The 45 days was me speaking to 45 people who did not know who Jehovah was. The majority of those people were right there in that pod that I was in. But they all got to know who Jehovah was. Remember, I'm a witness of Jehovah. I'm here to talk about Jehovah. That's my job. And I take that job very seriously. Okay, then I was told that I'd be in jail at least two more times. Now, there's going to be one more after this, but the two times was Puerto Rico. And then the one that just happened recently. Um, each time being released. Not knowing when I was going to be released, just being released. Knowing that it was going to be a short time. The next time is going to be a lot shorter, but it's going to be a lot violent. A whole lot more violent. It's going to be interesting. Why do I tell you this? Well, because at the beginning I told the God that I served that even I wouldn't believe this, so I asked him to please help me not to forget. So I wrote everything down. And it's on audio. Nine hours worth of audio of me talking about all of this. Did that in two, between 2001 and 2004. No, well, 2001 to 2004, and then again in 2015, uh, the stuff I was writing down about the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, what we just went through is not the pandemic I saw. Because, and it's going to be hard for you to understand, but I'm going to say it the way it is. I was there. What you saw over in India, that was the pandemic I saw in America. The piling up of bodies on corners and the burying of bodies, just too many of them, and the smell and the stench of dead bodies and the people, for some reason, 
this stuff is going to linger in the home, making the home uninhabitable. I don't know how that's going to happen. I cannot tell you how that's going to happen. I can only tell you that's what I saw. When we, there's a video out called The Dimming, and then there's another one called The Water. I would find those two videos. You can find them on Rumble, I'm, I'm told. Find out about the chemicals they're putting into our environment. And if you think that this global warming thing is natural, that's a lie. They're doing that on purpose. They're messing with the stupid weather, with their stupid weather machines. Harp and all of that is still functioning, people. Don't let that, uh, what is it, um, dish in Artecibo, Puerto Rico, collapsing? <laughs> Don't let that make you think that the system isn't still in Puerto Rico and other places throughout the world. Please don't do that. Go ahead and notice this year how it wasn't an El Nino. It was an uh, El Nino. It was an El Nino. But yet, Phoenix, Mexico, New Mexico, and West Texas got a lot of monsoonal weather. Isn't it interesting? But there was a drought every place else. Isn't that interesting? Then all of a sudden, we got hurricanes? No hurricanes, not a single hurricane anywhere on the planet. Pay attention. Throughout the entire months of May, June, July, and August. Hurricane season ends in November, ladies and gentlemen. And all of a sudden, we have two major hurricanes. Not to mention the one in the southern hemisphere that hit Mexico, Hurricane K, that did all that damage. Interesting, ain't it? All of a sudden, right after September began, not before it began, but right after September began, now we have hurricanes. Isn't that interesting? What place in existence is it so accurate? That it waited until after September. Normally we get them all during the year, but not this year. Give me one second, y'all. I'll be right back. I gotta be right back. I'm whining outside from the doggies. Needed to make sure they were okay. They are not used to hearing my voice at 1 a.m. with the windows open. So, yay. Um... Case in point of all of this, this pandemic, as I said before, if you pay attention, the depopulation of the bees is as a result of the chemicals. Um, you can do the research on it. I just say be very careful on how you do the research because they are definitely looking for people doing this type of research. You'll, you'll see. Many of you will see that they will now start targeting individuals because they have no other choice. The idea, my opinion, was we needed to infect everybody. So the key way was, remember, certain things were airborne from the beginning. The, the ships, do you remember at the very beginning, the ships that were docked off the shore, that they flew the people into the country? But individuals like in San Jose, California, catching something without being near anybody who had it just like uh ebola they proved that it was airborne by having the monkeys in the same room and on uh, in two separate cages more than two feet away from each other and guess what they they had no way of coming in physical contact but both of them had ebola shortly thereafter a canadian study but they were saying the only way you can get it is through physical bodily fluid contact. Really? That made no sense. Same way here. But now we have so many ways of making sure everybody catches this throughout the whole world. I think that's going to be our October surprise. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that what we just went through wasn't a pandemic. What's coming 
most definitely will be. Look, China's borders are still closed. Go ahead and take a look at the ships parked outside of New York, Florida, Texas, and Canada. I mean, not Canada, uh, Los Angeles, the Long Beach port. You, you don't have those hundreds of ships backed up anymore. You don't hear anything about the ports being crowded. Store shelves are gonna, store shelves are going to start to become empty, and it ain't gonna be because of no hurricane. Not my fault. Y'all need to really pay attention to what's going on around you, because what's happening is intentional. But I don't like surprises. I really do hate surprises. I have a hard time with surprises. It's partially as a result of the brain damage. I was talking to someone, and he said he had a couple of kids who one of them is fetal alcohol syndrome and the other one was uh drugs the parents were on drugs so both his kids are adopted uh he has i think he said four kids six of them all together but four of them are still at home and they have developmental issues because they're uh the ones two of them are adopted the other two are theirs so the two that are adopted have developmental issues and i told him I said, yeah, they have a real hard time with changing their structure. Change is difficult for them. Told them, I don't know what they're going through, but I understand what they're going through because I have the same problem. You don't just throw change on me. I cannot handle it. So I asked my God, as these days get worse, to help me understand what was going on because I wouldn't be able to handle the change this video is only going to be for a couple of more minutes because the battery on the system is going low and what i'm going to do temporarily is i'm going to plug in temporarily um so that i can get this completed well ladies and gentlemen what i do know is this we're not being told the truth by the news media. The news media is a propaganda machine in more ways than one. Now, how do we know this? Because Russia is not a saint, okay? What Russia did to Jehovah's Witnesses, they're now doing to their own people. And while Russians sat back and watched them do this to Jehovah's Witnesses, they didn't understand. I told everybody when it was happening. I said, this, if the people stand by and allow this, they're going to end up doing this to the people. Are they not doing it to the people now? Are they not arresting them? I saw the officer use his literally boot and kick somebody in the back of the head twice while they're on the ground. That's interesting, ain't it? Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Charles... Uh, Solomon Burke and so many other people who sang the song, None of Us Are Free, If One of Us Is Chained. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if they violate one person's right, they violate every person's right. And that's what people didn't understand. That eventually they were coming after their rights. So many of you are going to stand by while... People's rights are taken away. I'm telling you, that is what you need to do. Yes, I know it's going to come back on you, but you need to do that because everybody's forgotten about the FEMA colors. I have not. Don't, don't, don't email me. Don't text me. Don't write me talking about, I remember about the FEMA colors. Don't worry about it. You can't find anything on YouTube about the FEMA colors. 2012, you were seeing video after video, sheriffs of sheriff stations telling you about the report and the hearing not hearing, but the uh, the meeting that they went to when the national government was doing these meetings, preparing the different jurisdictions and how the sheriffs would talk about the so-called FEMA colors. The red, you're dead. That, I mean, literally, that's how I explain it. The red, you're dead. The blue, you are just inside of a cell. And the yellow, cowards, no, we don't don't do yellow for cowards, but that's how you understood it. The yellow are the ones who get to mingle among society. Ladies and gentlemen, when things get worse, 
pretend, go to acting school, that you are a sheeple. Pretend that you are a sheeple. Do the best you can. Just act like everybody else. It ain't difficult. Don't mention none of the stuff y'all been talking about on somebody's YouTube. Man, stop that. Rumble and all those other places, Telegram, keep that junk to yourself. Those of you who are doing videos and everything, sorry, Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what's coming. That's why I'm not running from it. I couldn't run from it even if I wanted to. I tried to avoid everything. I tried to stop it from happening. But I still ended up going to jail for 45 days. Pay attention. When I moved to Puerto Rico, I was getting away. I wasn't going to Puerto Rico to be in their jail. Pay attention. I was getting away. I was trying to avoid the other two times. And you saw it happen in Puerto Rico. I can't change it, ladies and gentlemen. It's already etched in stone. There's nothing I can do. I try to avoid it. You will not be able to avoid what's coming. But what you can do is you can make it easier for yourself by going with the flow. There's going to be a lot of things. Do you know this? Uh, these teenagers, these youngsters playing Grand Theft Auto in real life, stealing cars and crashing on the freeway and running into other cars and running from the police and shooting back at them. They're playing Grand Theft Auto if y'all haven't picked up on it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I was allowed to see in the future is that exact thing happening. But this time the police will be shooting back and not caring if you're on the freeway, not caring if you're in a car right next to the shooting. They won't care. That's what I saw. The, the amount of things that I was allowed to see, and a lot of it is coming back to me these days. So nostalgia, look, we can't go back. You can't go back to the 70s. You definitely can't go back to the 60s or the 80s. You're not going back to the 90s, and you're not going back to the early 2000s. Ever since 2001, everything has changed. Nothing will ever be the same. Ever since 2020, March 23rd, everything has changed. That was the day that Trump announced a national emergency. Nothing will ever be the same. You really must understand, we can't go back. There is no nostalgia. You can't go back. I hope you all understand that because that's the way the system is. Okay, look, I'm not going to keep y'all any longer. Like I said, I was just having a nostalgia moment. And listening to that, I, I'm sorry, but I, I like Bone Thugs and Harmony. Look, it takes skill to be able to put words together the way they did and to be able to harmonize. See, the unique thing about Bone Thugs and Harmony, they not only could rap, but they could sing. Okay, just listen to them. You will see that they they are called Bone Thugs in Harmony for a reason. Because <laughs> they can sing. They don't just rap, but they sing. They can hold a note. And that's why they are, not were, are so unique. I hear Busy and Crazy are having some differences right now. The only problem is, and I I I appreciate Mr. Crazy Bone. I didn't know him don't know of him i only knew that out of all the rappers it was busy bone and crazy bone those were the two i liked and they're the two that they they get along but they have their differences and their differences sends them apart from each other um i appreciate that particular group because of what they were able to do. I don't like the cursing. You guys know me. I don't like the cursing. The versions of each of their song, I edited it so that there was no cursing. Just that simple. I can't play the cursing. I won't play it on my system. And it just it brought back a lot of memories, especially the 90s and driving and listening. And I was, even though I'm West Coast, I didn't listen to West Coast rap. I listened to East Coast rap. And but Bone Thugs and Harmony, I listened to. Um, let's see who else was it on? They, they weren't West Coast. They were from Cleveland. Uh, but Easy E brought them to the West Coast. 
that's why you could hear that West Coast blend in their songs. So you could see the sampling and the mixing in their songs. So there was a lot of appreciation for that group because of what they were able to accomplish. It's the first of the month. Wake up, wake up. Anyway, uh, I just, all I can say is a lot of you may not be into rap. And I'm not talking about that stuff that's out today. I'm talking about, it, it's not even really old school. Old school rap is the 80s. The 90s is not old school rap. The 90s is just rap. They want to call it hip-hop, but it's not even hip-hop. Okay, you, you guys know what hip-hop is, right? It's Wonder Mike. I said a hip-hop, a hip to the hip of the hip-hip, a hop, you don't stop, a rockin' to the bang-bang, but okay? That's where the term hip-hop came from. Thanks to KRS-One. So it's not hip-hop. Do you understand? It's just simply that, rap. It was called Rapper's Delight. I mean, they created the term. Well, they didn't create the term rapping, but they created the term rap when they did Rapper's Delight, Sugar Hill Gang. Give them their credit. Give them their credit because they were... They were groundbreaking. Nobody had ever done what they did. A story rhyme, a party rhyme, and a ego rhyme all in one. 15 minutes long. 15 minutes long when it's all the way done. Rapper's Delight. Well, not actually 15 minutes, but you know what I'm talking about. Definitely almost nine minutes long is that one song. That's why you never hear the whole thing on the radio. That's what they did. They started, well, they reinvigorated what was already there. And it created its own style and its own offshoots and all of that. I just don't agree with the gangster so-called rap because that changed the whole scene. Rap wasn't meant for the West Coast to be getting started, but somebody had to change it because somebody wanted into the game. And so what did they do? They introduced it just like they introduced crack. Sorry. Same time period. They introduced it just like they introduced crack. The gang members shooting at each other, the rap members shooting at each other, you better believe that the authorities had something to do with that. Just like the gang members that they would take into other neighborhoods like they used to do in mine. And dropped them off. The police literally just kicking them out of the car. Expecting the gang members to beat them up. Which they did at the beginning. But they didn't do it continuously. They realized they were being used. And they stopped. A lot of appreciation for those men who realized the stupidity of everything. Alright, it's going on 2 o'clock. I'll probably fall asleep now because I gotta get up in the morning. We got documents we gotta do. Trust me, I'm working on two lawsuits. And the new programs for the SACOM organization. And those of you who are listening to this and we ask you to give your try at Amera Legion, we'll be giving you a call this week, so be prepared. Hey, everybody, thank you for allowing me. This won't be up until tomorrow morning. I'm not putting it up tonight. But thank you for allowing me to have this nostalgic moment and talk about Bone Thugs and Harmony like I said, the only unique thing was I could tell that they had some sort of an affiliation with Jehovah's Witnesses. I already knew Tupac did. Not because he did the song, hoping to find Jehovah. Not because he did that song, but because of the words he would use in his song. Same thing with Biggie. It's just, when you're a Jehovah's Witness, you go over certain things, you hear certain things because of the studying and you have an understanding of certain things and so that bleeds off into your conversations and so I could listen to them and see that there was an influence. Oh Jehovah's Witnesses they brainwash people. Yep, and that is the one of the biggest lies on the planet. Their meetings are online. All you gotta do is talk uh just type in meeting or Jehovah's Witness meeting, weekend meeting, midweek meeting. They're online. 
you can see exactly how every meeting goes. They're called meetings for a reason. It's a meeting place. It's called a kingdom hall. Hall? Town halls is where you go to meet and discuss things. That's what the kingdom hall is. That's all it is. Brainwashing? Yeah, okay. That's what you do in those little private rooms. Well, Jehovah's Witness, your kingdom hall doesn't have windows. Sorry, my kingdom halls had windows. Some of them did not. But why didn't they have windows? <sighs> to preserve and conserve heat. Windows expend a lot of heat. But if you didn't understand that, that's the reason why. But the kingdom hall I went to in New York, windows. The kingdom hall I went to in Arizona, windows. The kingdom hall I went to in New Mexico, no windows. Okay? The kingdom hall I went to in Puerto Rico, windows. So stop with the belief of thinking that Jehovah's Witnesses are doing something sinister inside the kingdom hall. I know, I know, I know. There are a lot of videos out there with people saying stupid things about Jehovah's Witnesses. Don't listen to them. Go to the source. If you're interested in something about a Jehovah's Witness, ask a Jehovah's Witness. Don't ask somebody who used to be a Jehovah's Witness. Because that's automatically a bias. Because most people who used to be a Jehovah's Witness, they either left because they couldn't get things their way because Jehovah's Witnesses won't change. Sorry, you're gay? Jehovah's Witnesses won't kick you out of the Kingdom Hall and say you can't come to the Kingdom Hall, but if you are a baptized member of the organization, you will get this fellowship. They will give you an opportunity to make that change, but you don't change, you will get this fellowship. Why? Because the scripture says no. They don't make any quorums about that. That is biblical law. That's not their law. They didn't make that up. If you don't like it, don't get mad at them. Take it up with the one who wrote that book. Okay? Those are his rules. But people are usually upset because they can't get their way. Because they think it should be ran like the world is ran, where everything is accepted. Nope, sorry. Jehovah's Witnesses will tolerate a whole lot, but they will not tolerate going against scripture. And so most of the people like Ja Rule, he was complaining about his mother being disfellowshipped. Listen to the reason why he said that she was his fellowship. Because she was doing something contrary to what the scriptures say. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses had a period of time where they gave individuals smoking damages the body. We see more so now. My mother died of cancer. Of course, smoking damages the body. So in 1976, any baptized member of the congregation who was smoking had to quit or face the risk of being as communicated from the congregation. Quite a few people. Why? Because the Bible says that we should not be damaging our own bodies. Smoking cigarettes is tantamount to committing suicide. Don't believe me? Mm -hmm. Look at all the people who have died as a result of smoking. Smoking is a very addictive thing. Very addictive. Some people can't stop. Sorry. Some people can't stop. It's addictive. It's designed to be addictive. But again, it's not their choice, meaning the elders and the, we call them the supervisor old men who keep the congregation clean. They are following the scriptural mandate. Just that simple. People say, are there anything you're allowed to do? I'm allowed to do everything I want to do. But it's just, the fact is, if I'm serving Jehovah, then I don't want to do anything that would displease him. Okay? Well, do you ever get to have fun? What do you consider fun? Fun! Natural fun! Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's version of fun is not the same version. I, some people think drinking is fun. I don't like the taste of alcohol, to be quite honest with you. I can't stand it. And it's not because it's anything other than nasty to me, but the only reason why I don't like the taste of alcohol is because I never wanted to become an alcoholic. So I made myself hate the taste of alcohol. Does that make sense to you? Because I never wanted to overindulge. When I was in my late teens, and my friends would sit up there and drink and drink, and they would have their little drinking contest, and I'd sit up there and go with them. And... 
they would be passed out, and I'm looking at them like they're crazy. And sure enough, I could outdrink them. Yeah, I did all of that, but getting drunk, it's, it was never fun. I've never thrown up, never will throw up. Stop doing the throwing up thing at the age of nine. Because I remember getting sick in Louisiana. And I thought it was because of the chicken I ate. And so I would not eat chicken for the next 10 years. You couldn't even get me to eat chicken. I don't care how you made it. I would not touch chicken for 10 years because I thought it was the chicken that made me throw up. And I made a promise to myself at the age of nine that I would never throw up ever again. Ladies and gentlemen, I have not thrown up since that period of time. So, my life is, I, I there's a, and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. There's a movie called Sydney, and it's about Sydney Poitier. And it's a recent movie through Amazon Prime, but I watch it on my network. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm watching Sydney, and Sydney Poitier, he, Poitier, Anyway, Sidney Poitier says that he had to teach himself how to get rid of his accent. I've always liked Sidney Poitier. Not because society says I should like him. I liked him because I liked his personality. I liked him in movies. Now, look, he wasn't the greatest actor. I don't care what none of y'all say. You can say, oh, he was this and that. That's because that's what the hype is about Sidney Poitier. I liked him as a person. I like his personality. I like his, his sense of integrity. But what Sidney Poitier said is he had to, he listened to this one particular radio announcer and he decided he was going to change his voice. Ladies and gentlemen, I did the same thing when I was a kid. The same thing he did. The exact same thing. Not because I didn't want to sound ethnic, but I did the same thing because I was just trying it. I liked the way certain people sound. And so that's what I did. I made it a point to talk like that. My family noticed it at first. But guess what? After about a week and a half, they didn't notice it anymore. Right now, I'm the only one who talks like this in my entire family. And so when I heard Sidney Poitier did the same thing. Poitier. Anyway, when I heard that Sidney Poitier did the exact same thing, then I realized that I wasn't so different after all. Okay, it wasn't just me, but the fact that I talk like this, and most of you, some of you understand what I mean when I say I talk like this. Those of you who don't understand, don't worry about it. Uh, we're gonna get you some help. Okay, you just you just have to sit there and wait, but we'll we'll get you some help. Okay, all right, just just sit there. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get to you in a moment. Lord have mercy. Anyway, uh, I am very grateful. To have known that that's what he did. Because that's exactly what I did. The exact same thing. Which means that we're not the only ones. I do not email me. Do not text me. Do not call me talking about. Oh I did the same thing. My grandmama had me do it. And, and you know. Nobody cares. Well nobody cares about what you did either. Well nobody asked anybody to care. Go back and listen. You don't hear me saying I need y'all to care. Please, ladies and gentlemen, again, an hour and seven minutes. This is for, there are certain people out there who actually do care about my person and about what I've been through and what I'm going through because apparently it allows them to get to know me better. And so this is for them. But if you've gleaned something from it, then I guess it's for you too. Hey, I'm about to go. I told you that was going to be the last thing I speak about. You all take care. Hey, it's a nostalgia moment. Goodbye.